Hello everyone and welcome back to Mix Best TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. I'm your host David and welcome to another Q&A. The next question, I'm probably not the best person to ask this, but I got this one a lot recently too. And that is, what's the difference between RMS and LUFS? Well, they are both two average measurements for loudness. Um, for many years, we used RMS to assess how loud a mix a master is. LUFS, which stays for uh, loudness units relative to full scale, was originally intended and still used for broadcasting um, to make sure the perceived loudness of advertisements was the same as the TV shows. And perceived is the key word here, because many engineers nowadays, because of that, uh, including me, feel like LUFS is a better way to gouge your loudness, the loudness of your mix, as opposed to RMS. And like I said, I agree with that. I, I usually use LUFS when I have to meter, when I have to check. With that said, I'm fine with both. I use two meters that I know well. I know how they are calibrated and I go from there. And please be aware of the fact that RMS meters are not calibrated all the same. Um, I don't remember off top of my head, uh, but there are some that we know are not calibrated well. I'm talking about plugins. I think Wave Pass is one. Um, Boxango default is, is another one, but it can be adjusted. I know Isotope Insight is correct. I know what else? Um, Waves uh, WLM, which is what I use, is correct. So make, make sure, make sure they are, they are, the meter you're using is calibrated correctly because there are two ways if I'm not mistaken, to measure and calibrate RMS. One is by using a sine wave, one is by using pink noise. The correct way for audio, for music, is to measure it with a sine wave. But if you Google it, you will find it. I'm just, I'm not, this is not scripted. I'm not reading anything, so I really don't remember right now. But yeah, like I said, um, going back to the original question, I prefer LUFS nowadays to to assess my loudness but i'm i'm okay with rms i mean i know i know how loud my mixes are by looking at either of them um with that said i do check level meter um but really the best way to compare more than to check if you are within certain level, especially if you have to broadcast your mix or if you have to upload it on, on a platform like Spotify, YouTube, we're going to say a couple of things about that, is just to compare with, um, with commercial mixes. I don't really look at the meter until I print the master because during my mixing process and my uh comparison with commercial mixes i just lowered the commercial mixes to match mine and and go from there uh, because we don't really give a shit about numbers we care about perceived loudness and perceived loudness is a combination of different things um is a combination i would divide this this way we have lows mids and highs okay what tells our brain how loud something is, is a combination of, I would say, harmonic content first. So how dense the material is, the, the, the crest factor that we talked about in previous videos, you know, the difference between the meat, the bulk of the music and the highest peaks. If that difference is too much, your mix is probably not going to sound that loud. Uh, arrangement, of course, is also another factor that somehow uh, affect how loud we perceive a, a mix. And this will sound kind of counterintuitive, but the less elements are in a mix, the more sparse the mix is, the loudest it's going to sound. 
the loudest we are going to perceive it. Uh, I'm thinking about some trap tracks that are so insanely loud. If you measure them, they are not that loud, but they have so little sounds as in number of tracks that they are just gigantic sounding. And another trick is there's usually silence in between the sounds. And silence just before a sound creates this huge contrast and make the sound that is coming after the silence just sound, you know, 10 times louder. I'm thinking Johnny Cash, uh, vocals and acoustic only. It sounds so damn loud. And uh, yeah, compared to like really dense mixes. So arrangement is another thing. But technically speaking, I feel like how extended the bandwidth of a mix is, so how extended is the top end and how deep is the low end tells us, tells our brain uh, how loud it is, uh, the way we perceive it. And another thing is, of course, probably the most important is the mids. Because, yeah, sure, bandwidth and extended high and deep lows tells us something tells our brain something, but let's not forget that not everybody has such an extended hearing and with age, it narrows down. But one thing for sure is that the human ear is used and designed to perceive well the mid frequencies, which is the frequencies of the human voice. So the mid range is what we are more um, sensitive to and a screaming, very harmonically rich mid range will always sound loud to us. Think of um, the hell frequency, <laughs> which is uh, how they call the frequency where babies cry. You can hear a baby cry from like five blocks away. <laughs> There's a reason for that. You know, it's just um, evolution is as a human being, we are we are built and designed to hear human voices. So that range is where our ears hear the most and they are attracted the most. And yeah, so a mix, make sure when why we, we check our mixes on small speakers, mono speakers, the old Auratone speakers, the NS10, all that stuff, because that's the range at the end of the day, that tells us everything about the song and the mix. The extended top and deep lows, yeah, sure, when you have a good system, or when you don't, which is the most you know, common scenario, it's the mid that speaks to you. And in the same way, um, having a well-balanced, harmonically rich mids will make a mix, given the same level, compared to another mix, will make you know the, the, the harmonically richer mix uh, louder, appear louder. Doesn't matter the numbers. So when you compare your mix to another, and when you when you compare to to your mix loudness to to another mix, keep these things in mind more than checking the numbers, because the numbers either RMS or LUFS are just number and you should only use them to make sure that you're good to go for CD playing, for broadcasting, for uploading on uh, platforms online, okay? Not to compare how your mix is going to sound, how loud or not loud uh, is going to sound after the other mix. That's, it's done by ears, okay? I hope this answered the question. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the bell icon for the notification so you get notified when we upload new videos. Follow the social media pages, Facebook and Twitter. And thank you for watching. Check out the store if you want to support the channel. See you next time.